had my first year this campus. So I was like, ah, this must be a mistake. How do I have 50 something over 100 in the course? On today's episode of the One Assemble Show, we bring to you a mind that is not only brilliant but incredibly resilient. From the corridors of civil engineering, we bring to you the best graduating students, Mr. Bolan Wadigun, with a CGP of 4.79. Welcome and congratulations, Bolan. Oh, thank you. So, Bolan, what inspired you to study civil engineering in the first place? Was it um, a childhood dream or was it just something that you just felt like you wanted to study? Um, I would say I grew up in a place where I saw uh, construction of buildings. So I've always loved how construction brings change, brings transformation, and and helps life life to be easier for people, right? So I would say it's a childhood dream. That's where it's, when I wanted to pick a course for for my undergraduate studies. So it was between petrochem uh, petroleum engineering or civil engineering, but yeah. OEU did not have. Petroleum. Yeah, and I, I picked civil engineering and I, I think I, I really loved it. All right, Bolan, at what point in your journey did you realize that you could be the best? Was there a particular event that shifted your, your mindset to becoming the best? Um, okay, I would say uh, my parents have like a significant impact on that. Great. Right? They, always, they always tell us, uh, right, my siblings and I, that uh, we, can, we can be the best in whatever we put our energy into. Okay. So growing up, uh, school, even though I don't compete for the best, right, but automatically I get to be the student that cuts away almost all the prizes. Wow. So wow. I, I grew up with that experience, okay. right? And there was even a time I moved from a yeah, school to another school. Yeah. So instead of being placed in the class that I left in the other school, I was, I was found that I knew more than the curriculum of that class, so I was moved to the next class. <laughs> so I've always had that experience, and I've interesting. Been, it's, it's just that, it's just that quality in me. I believe that I can be the best in anything that I put my hands into. But now, um, civil engineering is no joke, especially from about from our law university. You know, so um, I know you must have had some study patterns, strategies. I would like you to share with the viewers. Uh, okay, um, the, the first one I usually see anytime I get a chance to talk about my reading pattern is the fact that I like to study early. Okay, I like to study early, even before school resumes sometimes because I'm in an engineering field, so at least we have some courses that are calculation. So I like to cover that before school resumes, or I mean, we can get past notes from seniors, okay. get their materials. So I like to cover in the uh, before school resumes or in the few weeks of school because I'm, I would say I'm someone that don't really like stress. I don't like stressing myself because it's exam time, mm. it's test period, right? So and I believe uh, to pass any course, there is uh, a specific number of hours you have to like put into reading. So either you study late or you st study early or you stretch the hours. Yeah, you still have to cover those hours before you pass that yeah, particular course. Yeah. So why not put the energy right early? Okay. So that's what I do. I put the energy first few weeks of of um, resumption. Yeah. So even when lectures have not started, yeah. I start my own. So that when it's test period, I'm not rushing to cover syllabus. I'm not fidgeting because of his exam period. Because but during period. exams, do you like have group reading or how do you read yes, your load? Yes, yes, that one was, it was a really um, a full part of my uh, academics okay. I mean, study group. So okay. I have some friends, majorly in my department, that we that we read together and we share my. So it's not just reading together, it's like um, we look out for each other's academic sources. So we share, oh, this course, you are getting A in this course. Yeah. So they are like friends that are not just, it's not just sharing of material. Mm -hmm. They are friends that are like motivated. Ginger, yeah. Exactly, ginger, right? Yeah. So there's no, even if you don't do well in the test, they give you that vibes that Come you can on, still, exams, you yeah. can still do it, cool. right? Yeah. So and anything they get, anything you get, if I have an helpful material, mm -hmm. I send immediately. Okay. Without wasting time. If you, if they also have any material, they send immediately. Well, um, I mean, being a civil engineer, right? Many students find it very difficult to balance their academics, personal life, classes, assignment, and other things they do. How did you, I mean, how did you manage to balance your academics, personal life, and your social life? Uh, okay. Uh, first is uh, knowing that I have different aspects of my life, and I have to grow in them. Right. My yeah. academics, which is like. Let's say the major priority of being in OAU, right? That's why I came to OAU. So there are also other parts like spiritual, and I also believe in in this 
phrase so much that service is the best way to live, right? If you are not serving others, no matter the academic achievements, if you are not serving others, you are not adding values to other people's life, then there's no true living indeed. So I served in a couple of uh, committee when I was in school, yeah. right? So my department, some clubs too, right? And I'm, I also served in my church. Okay. So uh, basically what I do is that, um, the, as far as I can remember, maybe my final year, let me use that as an yeah. example. So the first, let's say four days, I use this for like Monday to Thursday. I mean, first four days of the week, yeah. Monday to Thursday. I use this for my own academics. Yeah. Though I still take tutorials. So I still well, you take tutorials. You yeah, teach yeah, other yeah. students. Yes. Wow. Yes, yes. Wow. So with an engineering company. Yeah. And I still take tutorials for free in my department. Okay. Or I did, I took tutorials. tutorials okay. Yeah. So, and, um, so I do that for the first four days. Okay. Right. And let's say Friday, I get to do other things. And most of the activities that I do, Apart from academics, they usually fall like Friday to Sunday, right? So sometimes uh, Saturday I also have classes. Then Sunday is obviously my rest time. I don't do most Anything. things. Okay. Yeah, and um, so one of the things that also helped me is that I try to tie my uh, covering my academic schedule for the week to an enjoyment. And that enjoyment is I like watching football. Okay. I'm a Barcelona fan. Wow. Yummy, so. <laughs> <laughs> yummy. <laughs> so yeah, yeah so. So what I do, I love to watch, I have to watch ball on Saturday, that's it. Nothing can stop that ball on Saturday, yeah. right? So, but if I'm not, the way I do it is that I make sure that the goal I've set for the week for my academics, I must have covered them before I can watch that ball. Okay. So that sort of way gives me like uh, motivation, right? You can't watch ball without not covering what you're supposed to yeah. cover for the week, yeah. right? So I cover that for the week and majorly, while I'm doing other activities, for that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm-hmm. I'm not feeling guilty that oh, I've not covered much in my academics because yeah. I know that for that week in my academics, I'm sorted. Yeah. But what was the defining moment for you? What was the one event that made you push other go further? Than, I mean, academically. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so when I tell people, uh, sometimes uh, I had to share the story after I I went through that um, this moment I'm about to talk about. Okay. Because um, like I told you. Secondary school, primary school, I've always like had good grades. I mean, good grades, yeah. A and B. I mean, something like that. So when I got to AU, part one, part two, part three, I've still always had A and Bs, which is like very good grades. So and like I told you, my company, my friends, right? We count A as the only grade we aim for. Mm. B was like a failure to us. So <laughs> C downward is yeah. like a no go area mm-hmm. at all, right? So if you can count B as a failure. Then, then see has to be forbidden. Exactly, totally <laughs> forbidden, right? Yeah. So it happened that part one to part five, I never had any C, right? So oh. and part four, first semester. Okay, the, the result was for part four, first semester was released in in part four, second semester, which we were on IT. So I was yeah. on IT then. So and there were like two courses on the same day. I had C. I had my first C on this campus. Wow. So I was like, this must be a mistake. How do I have? It's something over 100 in the course. I mean, that's like just barely above, above half of the mark, half of the total marks. But I mean, it was like, it was like, uh, a, it was, I would say, it was like a defining moment for me to see that, yeah, I'm not perfect, right? And I can have challenges. And what I noticed is there is that I, I always tell people that, okay, even if you fail a course or even if you do not get much of the course, there are people that got that performed excellently well. What did they do different that I did not do? So that was what I checked for. I knew I wrote well inside the yeah. exam. I wrote yeah. So what did what was it? So it's, it's not what it's not just about what do I want to put down. Mm-hmm. What's the lecturer expecting, right? So if I'm not missing the lecturer expectation, obviously I won't get up to the marks that I want, yeah. right? So and that shifted my perspective, right? That I was able to see that it's not just about um, studying, right? I still have to study to understand what the lecturer is expecting. I saw myself struggling, things I don't fear that I won't have before exam. I go into exam confidently, right? But now, because of that memory of C, I was like very afraid. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, God helped me and I was, after like two tests, I was able to like bounce back, get my confidence. And also, um, well, were there moments you felt like giving up, like times you felt like, okay, it was over? And if yes, how did you come back from those moments? Okay, uh, I think I've mentioned the the major one that yeah. happened to me. That was when I I got the a first C for C. the first time. Yeah, which was in part four. 
right and uh, the other moments maybe when i gained admission into here the fact that there was this um uh this how like call it was it a sense that senior tried to like uh push uh into us that um oh it is really hard you can't really like okay. white house is going to slaughter your gp mm -hmm. yellow house you also do the same right <clears throat> but i i just came with the mindset that is is once some people can do it then i can't right and what i use majorly for academics i believe that no matter the concept or theory that we are learning in academics it was derived or it was written or it was it was brought up by a person right so anybody as long as you put mind into it can learn it so Bola, did you have a mentor in your journey a friend or a course mate here yeah, that probably motivated you during this course uh, okay um yes i i do yeah one of them majorly was the HOD of the department when mm -hmm. I was still there. Yeah. And I also have uh, wonderful lecturers in the department of civil engineering. I also have um, mentors outside of academics. So outside academics, but um, what else were you involved in? Were you involved in clubs, sidewalks and other things? Okay, yeah, I, I joined a number of clubs when, when I was on campus. Like I okay. mentioned it earlier, uh, the plug-in OAU okay. club, because yeah, I'm someone that loves anything sustainability. I mean, keeping the environment uh, most stable for human living. So I joined the plugin club, also the Mind Tribe Club. Um, yeah, and yeah, I served in my department as the vice chairman of the academic committee during my final year. I also served as a librarian mm -hmm. and the coordinator of the competition team in my department. So what, what advice would you give to current students, especially those who feel lost, overwhelmed, or probably failed? Um, one thing I would say is that uh, first, it, it comes from that mindset of identifying that you can actually achieve something, mm -hmm. right? So there's no point putting energy into something when you already have the mindset that it's not going to be possible. So you first have to change that mindset that, yeah, anything is achievable on this campus. And one can move from a 2-2 two -two student to a 2-1 two student. Like I said, academic excellence is not a solo effort. Mm -hmm. So you have to find a group of, I mean, iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. As the Bible says. Yeah. So, uh, and I believe, like, reading with or studying with, like-minded people, mm -hmm. right, can be like a, a huge step towards achieving academic excellence. Yeah. So, so what's next for Balan Uh Okay, right now, yeah, I'm preparing for, I uh, see, NYC. NYC, okay. Yeah, so, and I'm hoping to serve in a construction company, a transportation engineering company. Okay. Yeah, I also plan to further my studies also in transportation engineering. So majorly transport system where I use um, build software, not just construction of road, yeah. It'll be software to ensure maintenance, to ensure that um, transport systems like road networks are utilized effectively, right? One thing that sparked my interest in transportation engineering was the fact that I almost missed my first scholarship exam in Lagos because of Lagos traffic. Traffic, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so because of that, I know that that was just like an opportunity that could have yeah, and I could have lost, right? Yeah. And I'm certain that there are people that have lost opportunities because mm -hmm. of Definitely. transportation issues, yeah. right? Yeah, but no, it sounds really great. And I mean, I must say I'm really inspired. Like, I can't wait to see you at the top, honestly. Oh, thank you so can't much. Can't wait to see you at thank the top. Thank you for having Congratulations me. Congratulations again. Thank you. thank you so <laughs> thank much. Thank you so much.